So it is very interesting to see how you can benefit other companies just by having that edge and um, what China can offer to the rest of the world. How is it appealing to them? Hello everyone and welcome to another video at China Admissions. Today I'm doing a special interview with Victor who studied at Shenzhen University. So thank you for being on today's interview and to for going over uh, your experience as a student in China and also congratulations on your recent graduation. Um, so can you give a brief introduction to yourself and what you studied, etc. Well, my name is Victor. I come from Spain. I originally started studying in the US, but then I saw more possibilities in China. And after my first year of degree, I just decided to take the leap and study international trade and economics at Shenzhen University. I did a year on campus and then the rest I had to finish online because of COVID complications. So I experienced both a language course for a year, a degree for a year, and then the rest online. So I've got a few experiences from China. Okay. And what motivated you to study international trade and economics specifically at this university? I mainly wanted to study in Shenzhen. That was my main goal. I think it's a, a city that's growing extremely fast and we need some people there and it just made more sense to stay in such a big city. After seeing the universities and what they offered, international trade and economics was what appealed the most. It was a bit of what's being offered, but because I want to stay in, in Shenzhen, mm -hmm. it was what resonated with me the most. Also, it's kind of a bit of family tradition to study something in the world of business and mathematics, economics. So I just decided to follow and yeah, really love. Okay, and as an international student, how did you adapt to living and studying in a different cultural setting? Were there any particular challenges that you faced and how did you overcome, overcome them? Um, the main challenge was to get over the initial hurdle that a lot of people pose, which is the culture shock. I feared the culture shock more than it actually hit me. I think it's a, an issue that a lot of people face just before going to a country, which is the build-up that a lot of people say, well, you're going to have a culture shock with such a different country. But I don't think it's true. Because once you arrive, there's a lot of people in the same situation and you tend to gravitate towards niches of like people that maybe come from the same culture, speak the same language, or just in the same situation of just feeling scared. So that was the main thing that I had to like overcome at first is realizing that it's not as scary as people might put it up to be. And the culture obviously is very different, but China is a very open culture, especially when it comes to meals. Shenzhen, for example, has the great advantage that it is a, a conglomeration of a lot of parts of China. So you can try many different types of foods, listen to different accents, and everyone has like a background from a completely different experience, which is extremely interesting. Yes, I also remember from Shenzhen specifically that because so many different people from China moved there, you very it was not very common to actually meet someone that actually was from Shenzhen specifically. Um, and also they brought their own food with them. So there were a lot of different restaurants that were owned by people that actually came from those places. places. So it was quite, I feel like it was quite a good environment to experience a lot of different parts of China and to meet lots of different people from across China. And then also to hear a lot of different Chinese accents, which I think if you're learning Chinese, uh, you might, maybe you might get frustrated in the beginning with people having such varying accents. But I think later on, it does play to your strength that you can understand people no matter what kind of Chinese accent they have. Yeah, obviously because you you learn the Beijing, it's a standardized course for foreigners, which is to learn with a Beijing accent. Um, and then every now and then you can identify when someone's from the north and when someone could be from the south. Uh, yeah. Which, as a foreigner, it's, it's a little bit of an injection of motivation as to like, oh, I actually can discern who's from where by maybe like two months of courses. Mm -hmm. And you feel more at home. And how was the experience, because you did on campus and then online, the experience of studying on campus, what was that like for you? Since that's what most people are going to experience right now, since the borders have opened again. It's, it's a lot in a good way, but this just everything that you would get out of regular university 
as a Spaniard in China, it's enhanced. Uh, the, the people, is uh, most of them, if you've heard that, had a state in Spain, I wouldn't know people so, from such varied backgrounds. Uh, the food, the activities, China, specifically Shenzhen, it's a city with, a, it's very youthful. So everything is designed to keep young people engaged, the malls, the cinemas and everything. So the experience on campus was something that I'll never forget, however brief it was. I got the most out of it because every day was something. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite thing to do while being a student on campus? I really enjoyed how some activities that would be expensive in Spain were very cheap, like going bowling, uh, the swimming pool, the university swimming pool had a, a proper 50 meter swimming pool, mm -hmm. was at a very low cost, like it was included. Um, going bowling, cinema and all of those things are just really fun activities that you can do as a group, but at a reduced price, which honestly, we just did a lot of things all the time. So being in China and studying there during the time, you know, just before COVID, um, did studying international trade and economics in China offer any unique insights into the global market and economic trends? Yes, at two levels that are very hard to explain. Just the fact that I studied there gave me an edge over people that, for example, Spaniards studying international trade and economics in Spain because companies reached out to me. And obviously you can't work in China, but you can listen to what companies have to say. So it is very interesting to see how you can benefit other companies just by having that edge and um, what China can offer to the rest of the world. How is it appealing to them? So as you study and you meddle into your degree, you see the potential of what you can do and why China is so appealing, which mm -hmm. for, a, a, especially studying in, in Shenzhen, which has, is the, the hub for export, you can see the potential that China has to offer to the rest of the world. Okay, so for, other students that are in Spain, maybe they're in their final couple years before they graduate and they're starting to look at where they should study. For those that are considering studying international trade and economics um, and they're considering China, do you have any advice that you could give to them? A lot of people are afraid of taking the leap. Inside of China, there's few advice because everything is very dynamic. The main advice would be to take the leap. However different you might picture in your head, you're going to see a lot of people there in the same situation. And you're going to feel closer to your interests than you would in Spain. It's more of a hands-on experience once you're in China, mm -hmm. which is the biggest advantage, especially when you have to do international trade, you need hands-on like seeing the documents because everything is very technical. Everything is on paper. Very rarely do you get to see uh, the ships leaving and all of that because it's not in your jurisdiction. So what you need to do is you need to have experience with the papers, see how to fill them up. And all those things are really they're just a daily in China. Mm -hmm. And did you ever have the chance to interact with local Chinese students or professionals in the field? And how did those interactions enhance your understanding of cross-cultural business practices? Shenzhen is a city that has a lot of youth and a lot of work. So you really understand how young people are, even Chinese people, are also going through difficulties. So you can understand how they help overcome those, those issues. And then when it comes to business, given that it's so different to Spanish culture, uh, the hands-on experience is vital. So. Okay, so... Are there any specific skills or knowledge that you gained from your studies in China or your experience in China that believe set you apart in the job market? What I the thing that I gained the most is the fact that you've got to be humble with your knowledge. There's always going to be someone that knows more and less, and then you're always going to be cautious with what you say and how you say it. That's the biggest thing that I gained out of China. It humbled me with how I do certain things. So I need to be a more open-minded. Mm -hmm. towards my approach and then show a certain level of interest on the person over the business, 
which that in Spain, uh, there is something called a more direct and indirect form of communication. Spain, for example, is more direct in um, in just this as a society. So when you talk to someone, you'll keep the sentences short and snappy. But in, for example, in China, short and snappy sentences can be uh, understood as slightly rude. So you want to be a bit more close to the person before you start doing business. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the biggest things that I gained from China. Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people talk about from being in China and how is a, a foreigner, if you're, for example, wanting to do business in China, but you've never been to China and you're about to meet Chinese people for the first time, it might be quite difficult, especially if those Chinese people are not accustomed to your customs. Um, it might be like very jarring to actually understand what's going on. Um, that's why people have courses and books written on how to handle the business part of doing business in China. And also because you have to, you, you go on several dinners and you have to um, have the right manners and it, things might seem like it's taking really slow in the beginning, but that's also a very natural way of doing it in China. And then suddenly things start happening towards the end. Um, and obviously, well, that might not be the case for everyone. That is quite common. Um, and it, I think that also being not very boastful, being very humble is a very admirable Chinese trait. So um, not just boasting about yourself constantly, because that's going to really put people off of you. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that you can learn from being in China, whether that's just as a Chinese language student or a degree student, and no matter what program you're studying, you'll definitely learn those things. And then you unfortunately had to continue with your studies online. Um, and I think for a lot of people, it was a very unique circumstance um, for everyone that was studying during that period of time. And uh, China was closed for quite longer, much longer than all the other countries were. Um, so your experience of being in your first year um, of your degree program and then continuing to do it online and then eventually graduating online. Um, though it's very easy to see the disadvantage of that, but were there any advantages to doing it that way? Well, first of all, it's the flexibility and the self-discipline that you've got to teach yourself, which everyone had to learn, no matter what, uh, if you did it online. But I am, I am very happy with the way that my university handled it. It's a complicated situation in general, worldwide, but they were they acted very fast. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't go back, but that is just a, a China thing. No one could go back in general. Also, the possibility to work was one of the biggest advantages is using the knowledge that I'm learning in class in the real world. You can't work in China, and that is something that's completely understandable, but you can work outside of China if you're studying online. So using that to your advantage, where you set yourself a limit of work and study, and if you adhere to it, you can get a lot of experience while learning. Okay, yeah, that's great. I think that for, especially in that circumstance, because right now people that are enrolling in this type of degree or in any degree in China will be going to China now. So nobody's really going to be continuing online, um, but it's great to make the best of a situation that isn't that good. Um, and thank you so much for joining today's interview. If there's anything else you would like to add for anyone that might be watching that wants to study in China. Maybe just take the leap. It's okay. very fun. It's very fun. And you're going to love the experience once you're there. There's a lot of things to do and a lot of people that have to take the same leap as you. So you, you're going to find someone who you're going to feel very connected to very fast. Great. So there you all have it. Thank you so much for joining, Victor. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye. Bye.